And so before there was a McDonald's and Burger King round every corner, before there was Five Guys, although not before there was a White Castle, there was Wimpy. Born in Chicago in 1907 was Edward Vale Gold. Another ripe old age of 27, presumably inspired by the likes of White Castle, Gold wanted a piece of that action. And so in 1934, he starts Wimpy Grill. Now, the name Wimpy was inspired by Popeye the Sailor Man comics. I'm Popeye the Sailor Man. In these comics was a character, a very fat character, called Wimpy. There's nothing in the world that can compare with a hamburger, juicy and rare. Now, his mission in life was basically just to con and scheme his way to get hamburgers. I mean, I can respect that. Randy, you set up this elaborate charade to cover eating seven cheeseburgers. <laughs> and so, with the popularity of these comics, Wimpy became synonymous with hamburger. To hamburger, tender and fine. And thus, the strong name Wimpy Grills was born. It featured a 10 cent hamburger, which, for the time, was quite expensive. The idea was that the meats were roasted and toasted. I'm not entirely sure what that means and what that entails, but I'm guessing that given that these weren't chronically mass produced, they basically add quite a bit of TLC to the burgers. And clearly, people were happy to pay that price. The chain then began to thrive in the States, opening about 26 outlets over the following decade before making their big move, flying across the Atlantic to the motherland. The home of great cuisine, the home of the one and only Queen, David Beckham, it's coming home, it's England. Now, the reason this trip was possible is because Gold had signed an agreement with Lions. By Lions Teeth. To open up a wimpy counter in Coventry Street, Corner House, London. Lions & Co was a British restaurant chain and hotel provider founded in 1884. They had their hands in a lot of businesses, but what they were best known for was the tea houses. And by 1930, they had the largest food empire in the UK. Now that's what I call a proper cup of tea. Lions Green Label. However, back to the 1950s. Lyons was experiencing some problems. The problems with their tea houses, despite being successful, is that they weren't particularly cool with the kids. Well, it was because one of the workers got done over there in the prom. These tea shops were the classier choice for your average Brit. However, this was the 50s. This is the birth of some of the most radical subcultures in the world. The greasers come up here and start causing trouble. You had mods, you had rockers, teddy boys. Now, none of these lot wanted establishment tea, establishment cake. They wanted revolution. They wanted wimpy burgers. Another variable at play here was that Britain had recently come out of a beef rationing from the war. Now, when you combine factors such as these, you have a story in the making. You have an entire market full of young, cool people who want to eat burgers. Do you like being a mob? Yeah, it's the greatest, isn't it? How long have you been a rocker? Uh, about four years. And so in 1954, Gold and Lions decided to team up and sign a lease to operate Wimpy Bars across the UK. Well, they certainly made a meal out of that one. Yeah, 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 we're having a Wimpy. One after another, the tea houses would fall and be replaced by the Wimpy. Won't you come on over tonight? This is a story that will come back to haunt Wimpy, but will keep moving forward for the time being. And so by 1966, Wimpy was well on its way for world domination. Yes, the hamburger business is big business. First on the hit list was Paris. <laughs> Enough with the snails, they said. This is a first world country, have some of this. The burgers, chips and shakes in no time at all. And it was such a success that a local paper labelled Wimpy as public enemy number one. Get down to that most serious and essential of Parisian pastimes. The French were hooked. So let's whet our appetites and eat. We're having a Wimpy. It then made its way to countries such as Ireland, Netherlands, Germany, Australia, New Zealand, India, Israel, Colombia. 
So here's a menu from the 70s that I found from Cambridge News. You've got the Wimpy Brunch, the Wimpy Grill, the Shanty Salad, Shanty Brunch, blah, blah, blah. I mean, the prices of these are inspiring. You've got a Knickerbocker Glory for 25p. A tea is 5p. I mean, these prices in my head should just return. How could anyone look at this menu and not be inspired? This menu transcends culture, space, time. Make a meal of it. Wimpy had nearly 500 locations in the UK before the protagonists of this story emerge. McDonald's and Burger King. Who's the last one? Why don't you give McDonald's gift certificates this Christmas? They're fun to give. Take the drive to Burger King, home of the Whopper. They offered much faster service. They offered more reasonable pricing. And they had the marketing budget to boot. I'm off to McDonald's to see all the boys and girls. Have a nice trip, Ronald. Wimpy was still offering traditional table service. And frankly, no one wanted someone coming up going, how was your day, love? How was your day? They wanted someone to bang the burger on the counter. Get it, leave, son. But what we don't know sometimes is what the customer sees and thinks. And throughout the 70s, it was clear that the good old days were drawing to an end. It's worth noting that at this point, the 500 stores was significantly more than Wimpy had in the States. There was much less attention paid to the States market. Our reason for winning the customer and keeping him is because he is profitable. In fact, by 1977, there was only seven Wimpy locations left in the States, which all folded the year after as Gold had a heart attack and passed away. Things became very troublesome once the company began to be moved around. Wimpy was sold to United Biscuits in 77 and then to Grand Metropolitan in 89. Grand Metropolitan is a big player in this story, as they also owned the devil itself, Burger King. And so with the obvious financial success of running Burger Kings, history repeated itself once again, and the tea houses got their payback, as one after another, the wimpy stores were closed and replaced with the Burger Kings. The following 30 years was a slow and painful death for Wimpy. However, they never died, which brings us to today. There's currently 67 stores still left in the UK. I am lucky enough to have one locally to me in Southsea, so I decided to pop over there and try and get some of these burgers and see what the experience was like, see if they taste, if they look different to their counterparts, Burger King, McDonald's, you name it. Now, they inevitably didn't let me film in there, so I've just got a couple dodgy clips of me inside. I figured I can't not film the fact that they actually sell fish and chips here. That is pretty cool. And again, it just reaffirms how English this company really became. They offer quite a lot of food here, and a lot of it, again, is very English. Besides the battered cod and chips, they've got an all-day breakfast. This is basically an English breakfast. This has English bacon, which I know Americans think is just terrible, but I have to say I've got a lot of time for it. They don't have some of the quintessentially British things. They don't have a black pudding. They got chicken strips, chicken club grill, all sorts of stuff. They got desserts. They have a whole breakfast menu, which is very reminiscent of McDonald's. They've got muffins. It's basically sausage, egg, hash brown. I picked up one of these last time. I didn't get them this time. It's all right. To be honest, I do prefer McDonald's. It's definitely more muted in the flavor. I've got time for it. So the first one I decided to pick up was the original quarter pounder and cheese. This has their signature wimpy sauce. It's reminiscent of the Big Mac sauce, although at least I thought we'll get onto that in a bit. My second choice was the smoky barbecue burger. I'm not a massive barbecue burger kind of guy, but I figured why not? And so the next one is the chicken stack. I decided to pick this up because in my head it's always worth getting a chicken item on a menu. Burger King, McDonald's, although I love these places, their fried chicken is clearly not as good as something like KFC or Popeyes, for example. So I decided to give it a try. And of course, we ended with the signature bendy and cheese. This thing is clearly signature and is clearly very different from anything that you can pick up in a fast food restaurant. 
And so the first thing that's very obvious with these burgers is the bun. I want to say they're like a whole meal bun. They visually obviously look very different. They're very un-Americanized, but it's hard to say that they are Englishized. Other than that, the branding, the bag, this is all your typical stuff. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and say this. The chicken burger was to a much higher standard, at least the actual friediness of it. Two Wimpy's counterparts. It had a bit of that actual KFC TLC to it. This was all right. Now, for the barbecue burger, I had a lot of time for this burger. This thing was actually significantly better than I thought. Now, in this barbecue burger was something that is genuinely interesting to see. It had actual English bacon and it cooked it to perfection. Look at this. I mean, this is crispy. This is perfection. And again, it's got that Britishness to it. The original quarter pounder with cheese is the only thing on the menu I had eaten before. That wimpy signature sauce is definitely reminiscent of the Big Mac sauce. It's just a bit sweeter, which I think is a theme with all their sauces. They're very sweet. There's nothing particular to write home about this burger, but what there is worth saying is that they do have this Englishness to them. Now, I can't confirm that this isn't a thing in other countries, but in England, there's a lot of burger vans. They're not made to the highest quality, and I'm not saying these are of that quality these are definitely higher quality but it has that british burger vanness to it which i thought was interesting to know and now for the big one for the moment everyone's been waiting for we've got the bendy formerly known as bender it's got fresh onions chopped in the middle with a slice of tomato and then a sausage around the edge this very much just tastes like a frankfurter and it's cool. You're not going to change your life from having something like this. But what I will say is by the time I bit into the middle, I had no idea that the ketchup was underneath the tomato. Now, the fact that this gave me a level of excitement just goes to show how much of a loser I actually am. But because that tomato is so sweet, it genuinely threw me off. Thumbs up. It's got the cosine. If you happen to go past a wimpy, I'd definitely check one out. <laughs> And so to close the video out, Wimpy today, where are they? What are they doing? Do they have any plans to come back? Is that a realistic goal? So as I mentioned, there's 67 left in the UK, but what surprised me is that there's 459 in South Africa. It turns out that the company is currently headquartered in Johannesburg. Sometimes it's safer to enjoy your Wimpy at a Wimpy. And they are very much looking to expand in England. In fact, a couple of years ago, before all that coronavirus stuff happened, they had announced plans for a big old comeback. Now, they didn't expand on this that much, but it is worth noting. Is Wimpy going to make a comeback? Are they going to get revenge on Burger King? Let me know what you think. Wimpy, enjoy every moment.